Hello there. Good morning and welcome to my little arty corner. Well, it's morning here in the UK. Still, it's 25 past 11 and it's Saturday the 3rd of June. It's quite sunny out. There's some very light clouds in the sky. Um, but as it's heading towards the middle of the day, that's the worst time for me to go out in sunshine. It's bad at any time, as you know. I'm always whinging about my skin, but it's a fact of life. It's not everybody can get out in the sunshine. For various reasons. So, you know, see what happens later on in the day. If it, you know, if it stays cool and the sun perhaps becomes filtered a bit by clouds, we'll see. But it's lovely to have you here. Thank you so much for sharing my videos. Yes, this is the third day in a row I'm releasing a video. The first time I've done this since November when I hurt my shoulder. So perhaps things are looking up. Hopefully they are. But thank you if you're a subscriber. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Thumbs up are always useful and don't forget, leave comments for anything you'd like to see, any suggestions for topics for videos. Just bear in mind, I don't draw people. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nope, don't do it. Um, there's a whole story in that one. Um, but you're all very welcome here and I just hope I can inspire you. So what have I got in front of me here? I've got two pieces of card. Now these are actually um, the off cut, the side trimming. And I trimmed my A4 paper down to five and three quarter inches to get to five and three quarter inches squares off. There was this bit left towards one side. Yes, I've done just a little bit more on this. I've added some more color in places and um, it's beginning to look interesting, shall we say. And you know, there's a lot more to be done, but I will get to that as and when. Um, so these are, oh, I've got, now got to find a ruler in inches. Have I got one in inches? Chances are the answer is no, but I will measure them in inches. What have I done with that ruler? I had one. Who knows? But these are 14 and a half centimetres long, which I think is five and three quarter inches, more or less. Let me have a look. Yeah, five and three quarter inches. And in width, there's six and a half inches, which is five centimetres is about two inches. So it's nearly enough two and a third, two and a, two and a half inches, somewhere like that. Now, obviously, these didn't get trimmed from a rectangular piece of paper and look like this. So I've used two of my punches. These happen to be Vassen Creative brand. I'll put it the right way up. But there are other, let me just do my autofocus lock. I always forget to do that straight before I start videoing. I have to write a list of things I need to do before I start, like get all the materials I'm likely to use. Problem is, I can change. So this has got three different sizes of round corners, the diameters of them. So 10 millimeter is quite a, a large one, which is what I've used here. Four millimeter is very small. And this, these give you a guide as to the kind of shape of corners you'll get. For the top, I used this particular punch, which will, I use this one here on these corners. Oops, if I bring it down, I'll be able to see. So this shape is this one here, you can see. Can't see what, exactly what the shape is there, but you can see that's how it'll be. And there's two different ones. This one just gives a block, you know, sort of like um, gives you a diagonal corner. This one gives you a little little nibble out of the corner, a little circular nibble. So they're both fast and creative, but I know similar things are available by different um, different manufacturers at different price levels, different styles. Um, if you don't have them. Just cut your paper to a rectangle. I'm just being posh today. All right then. So I'm just, see, note to self, get everything sorted before you start, Angela. Yeah, right. Okay, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to colour both of these with distress inks again, because I quite like the distress inks. I need a one of these circular things because I'm going to use my blending tool. And for this one of these, the first one, I'm going to use sort of browns, neutral colours. And um, because I fancy having something that looks quite vintage, I'm going to add some antique linen to start. Um, it's not a very strong colour, generally. 
just going to pick as much up as I can but it, it changes the colour quite subtly in the background. Pop the light on there, yeah, yeah, again. It's a subtle change. Oops. Perhaps too subtle for me today. But I've added some, I've done my job with it, so there we are. The next one I'm going to use is called tea dye. There we go, tea dye. And it's a lovely, well, tea dye colour. I'm just rubbing that onto this blending tool and I'm able to add this in. Again, this is quite a soft and gentle colour. It's not too intense, but it's a nice one to use because it gives me lighter areas in which to add some colour. Oh, not colour. Drawing. And I haven't put any pencil lines or anything else on here yet, but I will do, honestly. These would make great bookmarks or um, tags if, you, if you're if you into like um, junk journaling or keeping a journal and you fancy adding things to it. Um, I've got a hole punch somewhere. That looks different to that but I know it's not. It's an optical illusion isn't it? It is. <laughs> so I've used tea dye. What I do need, because my fingers will get mucky, is a piece of paper I can put under my fingers. Not just because my fingers will get mucky, but because I don't want to pick up ink off this background. I don't want the fingerprints there. Okay, I want something slightly darker. Now this is one of my favouritest, favouritest distressings. It's called Rusty Hinge. And it really is a lovely rusty, orangey, browny kind of colour. A bit darker again. So I'm not going to cover it all, but I'm just going to perhaps give some spots a bit here and there, around the edge. So that's that works quite nicely. And then I want to add a darker colour around the edge particularly, so that we frame the whole piece. And I'm going to go all the way around paper. This is Vintage Photo, which is um, actually works really nicely for edging. It's not too dark. And I am going to get into all the nooks and crannies around the edge. It'll give that hint of darkness around the edge, that sort of like aged, used look, you know, a bit of a grungy look. That means then that I don't necessarily have to draw a border on this to draw. I can go right up to the edges if I wish. Not sure whether I will, but we'll see what happens. Chances are I will now I've said that. Just keep this as the um, the edge, the border. Now they, this tool doesn't pick up as much colour as the, um, the foam that I often use. So I get much subtler colours here. Now I do want to add some drops of water to this and heat it with the heat tool because I particularly like that kind of effect. There's my, here's my so I've got quite a few splatters of water there and I'm just going to grab my heat tool which is still somewhere near me. There it is and just give this a quick dry. So Yesterday's video was quite short for me and I hope that, I know that when I repeat something not many people watch the second thing, the second video because they've got what they needed from the first, but I know I had requests for people who wanted to see some more, who wanted to see how I add um, shading and volume and dimension with um, coloured pencils and start to add highlights. So. I won't do another video on that particular drawing now unless there's a huge demand for one. But from time to time I will keep you up to date. I'll post photographs of it as it is a work in progress. Um, okay, so that looks really quite nice. I like that. I don't know if you agree, but that one is looking rather cool. So that's, that's nice enough. I do feel I need a darker edge 
I'm just going to find a piece of this cut and dry foam because I haven't got one in here. I don't know why I don't have one in here. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of ground espresso just to go around the edges. So I could use the foam side, but I'm not. I'm going to use the other side. You can see how much ink this picks up instantly. I'm just going to use this to both hide the edges, give that dark, darkened edge to it. So it gives that, you know, well-defined edge, which means I may feel comfortable going right up to the edge. I may not. I shall see how I feel in a moment. So that's really quite nice there. I just want to try to let a little bit of this just perhaps. I'm just going to have a little bit spread into the main part. Like so. Just to, to dirty up that little bit more in places, particularly where perhaps you might touch it more often, perhaps the way it's more handled. Once the distress inks are dry, they, and if you've got wet fingers, they won't react to them. And there are ways you can see all this. I could use um, clear gesso to seal it now. The problem with that is that the distress ink activates with it. But when I finished my drawing, I could use micro glaze, which is a very fine kind of... Um, it's, it's almost like a car wax, but it's not quite a car wax because it's I think it's archival and it just seals it in with this layer and it actually brings colours out because it is slightly shiny. So I've got one nice grungy-ish one there, but I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, yeah, I like that, but, but I think I might like a little bit of colour on it. So I'm going to get my blues. Oh, those are greens. Genius. I have problems from time to time, I really do. And I have my rounding tool, or round tool here. And I'm going to just use some lovely blue here. I think I'm going to add a little hint of broken china. Just a hint of blue in places, because I think I might actually need to use the um, this. I'm not getting enough of the colour in other ways so I'm just using that. I suppose I could have used a stencil with this or used um, stamps or something but I just want that little hint of slightly different colour I think. And that becomes a greenish colour here so it looks a bit like it's um, weathered which is what I want. There we go. So I'm quite happy with that. I think just a few more spots of water over that and in these darker areas where I added where have I put water bottle there we go where I've added um the darker colour just to add some of this texture. And I heat it because I like the dark edges you get around the water spots. If you don't want the dark edges, just leave this to dry naturally or but tap, tap the water off or pick the water off with some paper towel. I've got to bring paper towel here. Yep. Yeah. Got to buy some new yesterday. I've got, I've got plenty downstairs, but I like to keep some up in my work area. After a while, I've got some white, some um, water spots there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it on there, but I'm also going to... Oh, look at that. I've picked up some spots from my back colours there. Well, that is now what it is. And I'm not going to fret or panic about it. I'm going to make use of it and introduce it elsewhere. So there we are. We've got little spots of colour. That's fine. I can live with that. In fact, that was an unexpected. Happy, happy, happy. I know there are people who will put these onto a, a glass mat or a, um, one of the non-stick craft mats and sp spray water on and drag their paper through and everything. 
that is just too messy for me. I do like a little bit of control here with my work. Okay, I've got broken china out here still, so I'm going to add this on this one to begin with. I'm going to put a fairly generous amount on. This is one of my favourite blues. It's um, It's got that hint of green to it, just a little subtle hint. Mind you, it might be because this paper isn't pure white. And I'm fine, fine with that. Okay, so I've got that one. Now, next up, Blues and greens go really well together, so let me find some greens. I would like, I'm going to use, where is it? It's not in that one, it's in this one, because I've got more greens than I know what to do with, so the more yellowy greens I've put into a different um, pot. There we are, I'm going to use this, which is crushed olive, which is a lovely yellowy green. And I am going to, I will need another colour here. Just clean that off. So that looks really good. I like that. Okay, so I've got some greens and blues. Perhaps a little darker blue. So I'm looking for a blue here. I think I'll use faded jeans. I'm moving off the screen. Sorry. Faded jeans is, as it says, it's kind of a faded jeans denim kind of colour, old denim. I'm just going to move this in areas particularly where there's no colour but also just to dull that green down just a little bit. So this one's much more vibrant and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my browns and I'm going to use a brown to edge this again and I think I'm going I think I'll use I was going to use vintage photo but yeah let's try walnut stain it's a slightly darker color it's more brownie I love I love aged mahogany which is this one which is a lovely red color but I think it's too red for this and the ground espresso I could use to gather twigs Frayed burlap. I can use gathered twigs. It's not as dark as the walnut stain. It's not a colour I use often, but I'm going to give it a go. So I'm going to use the cut and dry foam because I'll, I'll want a little bit more ink than I usually do. And I'm just taking off some excess. Get my little bit of paper so I can just. Actually, that works nicely because these. Logically, you think, hang on, these colours remind me of leaves and forests and nature, so gathered twigs would work, wouldn't it? So I'm going to do that. And yeah, I've, spilled, I've made a bit of a mess in places with, the, with this brown, but I'm going to work with, I'm going to say, right, that's how it's meant to be. This is what we are doing. This is how this is supposed to be. And I am going to, because this worked last time, I'm just going to give that a bit, bit of a spritz on here. And I'm just going to lay it down on the wet, damp bit and pick up some of these colours at random. You can see, it's just little speckles. I'll do the same there. Oh, and that's a big spot. It'll be fine, it'll work. Should really have done drops like this to get some drops at the top. This is just the um, sprayer thing from the bottle of water spray that I've got. I'm just putting it in there, picking some water up and tapping it with my finger just to get some water out of that. So this then hopefully will be done. We shall see if I'm happy with it. What I might do is I think you see, if, gosh, why are you moving around, you awkward thing? The other one didn't, did it? It didn't fly all over the place, so... That is lovely in the middle. What a genius idea, Angela. Oh, yeah, I need to keep these backgrounds now to use like that. You know, these papers, I just treat them as... When they've got too much ink on, throw them away. But if this creates an interesting pattern, then I'm all for using them. And that seems to have worked out really nicely here. I don't know if you agree. Now I can see the edge of this paper is quite 
is showing through and I do want to darken it up so it looks quite nice so I'm going to use the ground espresso again because that does work quite nicely gosh this paper's hot now the heat tool does give out very hot air so things dry very quickly you can use it for embossing powders and I, I do have embossing powders somewhere I don't use them these days much but I have done in the past where I draw with a, a glue pen add the embossing powders heat them to melt them so they stick to the paper and then that is my outline for adding colour and it's brilliant if you use water-based media so I've just got a bit of this and because I've got such a tiny bit left on here I'm just going to go where right I didn't get anything along the bottom edge here so I'll just go there I'm just going to add a little bit of the darkness in places I've done a good job there I haven't done too much of a good job there either just in some places just to darken those up and that one then I think that one's done as well what do you think I'll show you them both I shall move that out the way but bearing in mind I'm going to keep that so I've got these two that is something I wouldn't have created if I hadn't serendipitously discovered what I with the colour drops there so I'm quite enamoured with those what do you think oops there we go we pull them down better still let me move my camera back because I will hang on you might get a loud noise because I'm lowering my chair now for drawing to keep my arm comfortable what do you think this one speaks of flowers and things with the green background whereas this one I'm not quite sure what I do there I'm tempted to want to fill this with pattern right I got my Twisby yeah part of me wants to add that darker edge like this in here a bit more as well but I'll put it to one side for now because this one is one I really want to work on I've got these lovely patterns here and I'm going to make use of them in many ways to, um, shall I? Yeah, let's go for it. So I'm going to not follow the lines exactly, but I'm going to delineate an area of that colour, like so. With this. And I'm just going to draw some a quite simple flower, I think. So I'm drawing petals this shape. I will move it in, move it a bit closer. There we go. So you can see they go wider, round and back narrower. And I'm going to do that around here, picking up this pinky colour. The chances are I'm going to dig out my Art Nouveau coloured paints or ink tents. Not sure which yet. And add colour to these sections because simply I can. But this is going, I suppose it's the inspiration I've taken from the um, Neurographica I've done in the last couple of videos. I'm using the colour in form where I put things. With this one certainly, with the other one, it's a, I've got quite so many areas. So I've got these lovely pink spots and dashes, we'll have a look at that. It's a very strangely shaped flower, but I'm happy for that. I do need a stem coming out from it. And if you know me in stems, I like to make my stems have some interest on them. And I don't know why I do this, I just do. Makes them quite architectural in some ways. So I'm doing this while I'm thinking about or letting ideas to do with what can I do with that flower now? How can I make this interesting? And I am going to go right to the edge of this paper and off. Just like that. 
still thinking about it, so I'm just going to go back. I'm going to start adding extra ink to the left of the stem. And a little bit along these little shapes here, bottom, bottom one especially can go all the way along. Just helps to define them. And that extra bit of ink gives that suggestion of volume dimension. Oops. Move the paper too soon while I was moving my pen. It happens. Okay, the middle bit is an unusual looking shape and I want to do something with this. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by putting some largest circles on that side and then smaller on the other side because then that gives that feeling that this is falling away and these these petals are peculiar these ones here are and they could do with being that little bit longer okay so I've done that so now I need to do the same kind of thing to all my other petals and these lines don't need to join up they don't even need to be the same size if you want to make them join up around, please feel free. But I'm not invested in that as an idea. I'm going to stagger mine as much as I can. Sometimes it's going to be nigh on impossible, but, but we get that going on, which gives some interest there. And I'm just going to add some ink to the left and bottom of the petals on the left hand side you know from the middle at the bottom to the middle at the top on the left hand side we'll add a little bit there and then on the other side it's going to be to the bottom only like so and that just adds some um, shape and dimension and interest there we've got to have leaves so i'm going to draw my vein in and actually I quite like that as the shape of my leaf so I'm just going to double up that shape at the bottom like so perhaps just put another one there that's nice that works so I'm going to do this same kind of idea For each of my sets of leaves. Like so. These ones here at the bottom would be quite a lot bigger because leaves tend to get bigger when you go down the plant. Now I did overlap that and made that a bit thicker than I wanted to. But it's okay. And then Like so. So I've got an interesting flower there. I could put some little leaves here, but they'd have to grow out from in between these, which is fine because there's no rules really. You can see that I've changed the shape of them because it's a bit more awkward to draw these ones than the others. I've actually got some quite big spaces here. So perhaps I will just split these and perhaps add an extra section on those. So I've got quite a lot of leaves here. I'm not going to add another flower, I don't think. I'm not quite sure what I am going to do. I'm going to do something definitely. Perhaps I will. Perhaps we'll have a stem coming up here and perhaps I'll do another flower here. So I've drawn an upside down letter C and I'm going to create a letter D but a weird one. So instead of the line, you know, if you look, it looks like a letter D but instead of the line being straight here I've curved it down. So I've got something that looks like, um, oh gosh. What are the names of the sweets we used to have when we were kids over here in the UK? Not midget gems, jelly tots. And I'm going to create 
a similar kind of flower but I'm going to have all the petals pointing downwards here. So I'll get to the point where I think I've done enough petals there. So I'm going to go back here and start to add some more, gradually making them a little bit shorter, going around the back just a little until perhaps these are the last ones there that would curl behind. To fill this in, I'm going to do it in the same way I did with the other one to suggest they are part of the same flower. With the dots here getting smaller. And I haven't put them to the edge, I'm leaving them like that with shapes around them. Okay, so start by adding ink to the left and the bottom. all the way around the bottom, left and bottom, bottom and up a bit. We'll just have them going up there a little bit. And I've just noticed what I haven't done on these is I do want to round the petals here. With those very sort of flat and quite sharp triangular shapes with the sides curved inwards. They become very pointy, a bit like an arrowhead, I suppose. Or an arrow that has got sides that are, you know, point inwards. And because these are the same plants, we need to do the same thing at the end, like so. Now up here, because we see less and less of the petals, these aren't going to necessarily be quite so visible, so as we go, I'm just going to make them smaller and smaller until they disappear, and that will work. Again, we need the stem. Now, this is where I've got choices, and I think I'm going to get a pencil out. My pencil case, which is always a good thing. I have a pencil here. Just cap that for a moment so it doesn't dry out. And I'm going to very lightly draw in my stem here. And I'm going to have this stem join here and I'm going to draw another stem up here because I want to add a bud. How about that? So we have three group, groups of three here. So I can carry on adding this and remembering to do the left and right bottom. I didn't do those little bits here. It's getting really quite warm in here. The sunshine really warms my house up. I live in a house that's well over 100 years old. It's about 100 and 120 odd. It's built of big blocks of stone. It was a miner's cottage, well, miner's house, um, back in the late 1800s. And in the winter, it can take a while for the house to heat up when it's cold, but when it heats up, it keeps the heat for quite a while. And in the summer, it can take a while for the stone walls to heat up with the sunshine, but once they get warm, they stay warm for a long time. But I love it. And it, is, it feels warm here now. So here's where the stem's going to go, and it's going to connect to this stem behind this leaf. These leaves will need, again, to be consistent. Thicker line at the bottom and to the left. So here's part that's towards the left, and I've got such a tiny space here. I'm going to thicken that one there because this would be thicker. Like so. So 
So we've got those done. And I just did the um, little bits there. Now I'm, I've got that coming there, but part of me thinks I'd rather like prefer the bird going up here, to be honest. And I'm going to have it. As a typical Angela Styles bird. Nice and plumptious. Like so. Again, just thickening to the left and the bottom. At the top, I'm going to carry this line on. And I'm going to draw a little shape like that. Um, because I can. So I now need to draw the stem that goes with this. I'm not going over the pencil here because it's I haven't drawn the pod in quite the right place, but it gives me that guideline that will take me back. So a mixture or three elements always work well together. They create a pleasing composition. There's something about odd numbers that pleases the human brain. I say this very often. It's, it's got something to do with if we have an even number, our brain's always trying to sort them out into um, groups of even numbers, so it tries to organise them where and see patterns. Whereas if there's three, it's three, it's a triangle. If there's five, it, it just they just work. It, you can't do it. And um, your brain quite likes that. So it's time for leaves. So here, uh, these are going to be quite small. I'm just going to put a single one down the side. Got a leaf there that is going behind this flower and another one there and that is perfectly fine. Here I could have a leaf coming up here which again is quite fine. Like so. Let's just put some ink on that side and there and here. Just one more section there. And then I can have one that appears from behind here as if it's coming from a section further down. So I have got all of this here. And even though my flowers look a bit weird in some ways, I think I need a couple of leaves at the bottom here just to fill this space. It looks a bit odd without any leaves there. Just one more there. Just have a go there. And that works quite nicely now as well. The leaves are perhaps, if I thought about it, if I just sketched this out in pencil, I might not have put them as I have, but they they work. Okay, little bits of filling in these corners, making them rounder there and at the top. And then I'm going to put this to one side just to dry for a little while. Do I need to do any anywhere else? So if I zoom out, be able to see all of it. I need it to dry before I try to erase anything out. So I like that. That works nicely for me. Um, I do want to do something along here. Actually, perhaps I'll do that. 40 minutes in. May not get to the other piece of paper, you know. But you know I did those, that sort of torn edge. It's almost like creating a paper collage, but with a pen here. Um, I'm actually going to create this where I can add some colour, perhaps, and pattern to this. And I may just use my ink tents. I don't know. 
Or I could use coloured pencils because they work really nicely, don't they, with this? They do, actually. So I'm just going to add a bit there. So this is a bit like torn paper or collage, layers of collage. So instead of actually doing it, which I'm a disaster at, it's not my kind of thing. In the past, when I was doing A-level art, my sketchbooks would have pages that had um, tissue paper or other papers collaged on or coloured in some way with some medium or other. And I used to draw on those. So it's a way of breaking the whiteness of the page, just as this colour here, adding colour to the background, is a way of breaking the, the whiteness and allowing yourself to go, OK, then I can draw on this now. I, you know, I've got colour there, so whatever I do is going to be fine. And it's that kind of feeling. And um, perhaps I will just have this one going up there a little bit, and perhaps this one as well. That feels okay. I'm going to leave the other side as it is. I'll use gold or something to fill in some of these dots. And it's a good trick, like this is really good for um, adding colour. So yeah, so I'm going to go and find my coloured pencils a moment and um, the gamsol and stuff and I'll be back. I think that'll work. I think it'll work better says if I put a, a fine edge on it because I like fine edges on things and that gives me an option to either put colour there or something else like gold depending how brave I feel do I want to put that kind of thing elsewhere I'm not entirely sure I think here I definitely want to put a shape like this that will break those two places up. Do I need to do that anywhere else? I think I might here. So before I add any colour I'm adding some spaces to this. With the other sections I'll see what it looks like with colours added. Because I know from yesterday's experiments my um Chromaflow pencils work really beautifully with this. Now here I'm just going to leave this perhaps just like that the two long thin sections. And I'm going to go back down here and just fill this in. So that will work here but the others because I'm, I'm not entirely sure how the coloured pencils will affect the blackness, the darkness, the intensity of this ink. I'm going to leave them. So I've, I've only got to walk a few steps to go and get my pot of pencils and I'll be back in them. Well, you'll hear me creak and moan and the table creak. There we go, got them. The only other thing I need is those. The Gamsol. I have got some pencils out here. I've been using with the others. Okay, got these. Got these. Okie dokes, we're, we're good to go. So I've got the coloured pencil. I've put took the pencils out that I was using yeah, um, in my last video with um, the Neurographica. And I brought them over with me so I can see whether I want to use them on this any of these on this. Now then, that one and that one would go quite nicely, I think, in the flowers because of that lovely pinky colour that's there. I don't have any blue or teal, so they can go back over there. I meant to put those out. I have got some greens. This cactus, that might work. What colour's that? Well, I don't think pastel mint will. Got foliage, which is a lovely, that's a lovely yellowy green. Cactus, perhaps not. Obsidian green might. Let me have a look here. What colour's that? And I've got basil. I know these are nice colours, because I've used them before. 
Okay, and I do want something golden in colour for this. So I've got sunflower there and a slightly darker colour. Amber gold, which I'll get out. But I'll also get... Oh, what colour is that? That's slate grey. That looks greenish. It's not, it's blue. Oh, that pair's a nice brightish green. Um, I want an orangey colour, but I don't want one that's too... That one may have to go. Is that one? That's flame. I did have mango here somewhere. Yeah, the mango will work, and I'll pop the flame in just in case I need a touch of that. There we go. Boom, let's get to this. Oh, the only other thing I need to do very quickly is all of these tortillons and things, they need a bit of a clean because they've got different colours on them. So I've got my scritchy scratchy sandpaper here, which will just take the a layer of paper off. This, paper, this sandpaper is particularly coarse, I've got a finer one somewhere, but it cleans the, the paper that's stained off, or takes a lot of it off so I don't transfer colours. And then oh, I've got purple here, got that, I've got that end, so that's real, that's fab, we're good to go. So I've got the Gamsol, it is warm here, so I'm going to be mindful that I am, I've got my pencil sharpener just in case, in fact I might need it for a couple of these. Okay. Eraser. I need an eraser. I know I've got one somewhere there. Because before I do anything else, these pencil lines have to go. Because once they're underneath the colour, they won't go. There we go. So, let's get started. So, I'm just going to put some of the darker pinky colour here. It's not an exact match to the, the pink there, but it's close enough, I think, that it'll work. And I know from yesterday as well, that this lovely texture that's underneath will, you know, from the water drops, it will show through. And these colours will sort of like add to the colour underneath rather than anything else. So let me have a look here. That's okay, right. Put the lid back on that, just to help stop it. So. And this is lovely, I'm using one colour to fill this in and get that lovely gradient. It's not going to be a pure pink here because it will mix with the background, but I'm fine with that, you know. This means that these colours will work together across the whole of this in a strange way. Honest. It almost makes the petals seem very translucent and very delicate as well. Which is also fine. Okay, so I've done that one. So this bottom bit, I'm going to add some of this lighter pink in the last section. I guess I could have got some white out, but I'm not quite sure how white, how opaque the white is and if it would be any help. Bearing in mind I've got white gel pens I could use. So again, I'm just going to use this one, even though it's got the darker colour on it, because there's so little of it. It's not going to make much of a difference, so... Got those. So I'll do the same on these, where I'm going to add the dark colour here. I actually might add this dark colour in the bottom sections as well, to be honest. Just under the line. 
So I've got that darker start again and it just goes down. I could have chosen a different colour but let's see how that looks because sometimes yeah. Yeah, it's really warm. The gamsol's evaporating from my paper stump quicker than I expected, but you need so little of it anyway. Like coloured pencils, it's amazing. Well, I think so. And I'm happy with this, so... Yeah, definitely need to drop more gamsol on this, because it's they're not spreading out as easily as they were, so just touch it to that foamy pad on the top. Put the lid back on so it doesn't all evaporate. This scamsol isn't to be breathed in, it's not very good for your lungs, it can kill you, sort of, you know, cause you to stop breathing or have difficulty breathing if you breathe in too much. But fret not, my windows are open, there's a breeze flowing through here, it's a very light breeze, but there is a breeze. There we go. And I am going to add some on my bird. I'm going to put it up the fair away because I think I want to add some green at the base of this bird as if there's a hint of... I'll see how I feel in a moment. There's a hint of leaves there or new growth. I'll see how I feel. There we go. I definitely think I'm going to add some green. Let's use the foliage. I'm just going to add some green there. Again, I'm going to use the other end of this tortillon or paper stump, strictly, strictly speaking. And that just adds that little touch of green there, but I do think I want a little touch of something darker. Obsidian, I'll use basil actually. I'm not sure the obsidian might be just a bit too green for this. Basil might just be what I needed, yeah. So the obsidian green is now going back in the pot. Out the way. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to add the... I'm going to add sunflower. here to this and I'm just doing it to try to get it around these sections this is going to be interesting because these are the ones where I'm going to get that color showing overlapping the ink if I'm not careful well I'm not going to be careful because I haven't got a paper stump that fine I don't think have a look that one's pretty good for it I'm just going to blend this out and I'm going to see how that looks. Bearing in mind this will blend that colour smoothly around. That actually has added, sorry I'm moving off the camera screen aren't I, sorry. That's added just enough there but I do want to add a slightly darker colour at the bottom, I think. So I'm adding some mango around the edge. Where? Not paying attention to shadows here. I'm using these more as part of the pattern or texture. Now that's worked nicely. That's given a nice changing colour there. And then I've got this flame colour, which is quite a dark orange and I'm going to use that to add some colour to these spots, darker colours. They look like spots of orange pollen, I suppose. You can see I've only put a line there but with the gamsol you can blend it out so that line just about disappears. It's lovely. Again, just such a tiny amount of colour, and it gives such such a lovely 
almost intensity of colour but without it being too intense. So we've got those. I do want to add some more colour here. This does need a little bit more. Colour. Perhaps I should have got a purpley colour to go with that, but that'll do. Okay, so we're getting those. Now then, I am going to use some of this basil on the leaves. I'm going to put the basil at the base and at the tip of the leaf, of each leaf. I've put the lines in, perhaps I shouldn't have, I'm thinking now I should have left these for a little while. Put that there and there. Here and under there because there'll be a shadow here and under there. The shadow here as well. Bottom. Shadow under there. a little bit a bit more of the darkness along the edge bottom edge so that it looks that it's in shadow it helps with the sense of volume as I call it dimension as other people call it gives the illusion that these have perhaps a shape to them perhaps a little bit more the darker green in the second one and moving upwards perhaps that'd be fine and then I want a lighter green now I've got the foliage which is a yellowy green and I think that might work because the pear was a bit light I think so I'm just going to add this where there's no color and overlap them a little bit um, highlight I'm going to put on here with um, white dots because that is my preferred method. But I also know that if I use the Gamsol in the correct way, starting from the lighter area and moving into the darker area, I can lighten up the colour in the middle and move it away, perhaps. So let's have a look at that and see how we do. Okay. Moisten my paper stump again. Close that up. So let's have a look. Let's stroke this. There we go. And I'll zoom in for you because I've realised I haven't really zoomed in on this. The method I'm using is the same for all of these. So what I'm doing here is where I want the colour to be darker, I'm moving the dark colour into the lighter. And where I want it to be a lighter colour to give a kind of highlight, I'm moving the light colour into the darker colour. And that seems to work. Okay. Lots of dark here, not so much of the light, but they will blend. So, it's really quite quick to do things this way. Um, obviously, if you don't have the mediums I'm using use whatever you've got and if you haven't got gamsol or you know you've perhaps got some hand sanitizer and cotton buds that will work as well um, apparently baby oil and vaseline they work well as well to, to blend colored pencils so use what you have don't go out spending a lot of money I and mean, i buy i buy materials because it is my business and um, as in, 
I work for myself, I'm self-employed, so I make use of them in different ways. But there's always alternatives to those, so whatever you've got, use that. Use whatever you are comfortable with. Seriously. And of course, watercolour would work. For the background, if you haven't got distress inks, use whatever you've got available. Watercolours, chalk pastels, anything. So that's beginning to bring this to life now as well. So let me just zoom back out. You can see that beginning to happen. I'm not going to do the stems here because I'm going to approach the stems in exactly the same way. I'm likely to make these thin bits actually pale green and these knobbly bits, perhaps um, dark light, dark light and so on. I do want to have a look at these here. Now I do want to bring some of the colours from this here. So I'm going to add some of the mango in this thin line here because if I'm going to put gold on here, these colours will show well, they might not show through the gold, but they'll add some colour to it. And it just starts to bring these colours in over here. So I have got that sort of yarn. Just need to dampen it. Oh, I'll add a bit of the flame right at the edge as well, just to darken those up. And of course, these colours will blend one into another then as well. As well as blending out to fill the whole of the space. And if some of the darker colour gets transferred into sections here, as I move my tortillon around, I'm fine with that, those imperfections. It is it is what it is. I'm working with it. I'm learning to let go of wanting it to be perfect all the time. Okay, so I'm going to use basil, but it does need a quick pencil sharpen, so excuse the noise as I put it in my rotary one. I've got one of these. Yeah, you put it in there and twist the handle. You can adjust how sharp you want the point. So I'm going to put the colour towards the edge. Now then, I want to find a place where this colour would come out again, as if we've got it layering. So I'm going to put my colour here. Okie doke, so I need the green. Excuse my arm coming across, but... Okay, so let's have a look at that. So let me just zoom in so you get a look at it. So I've just added, this is basil. So I'm going to start at the edge, just as I would do with watercolour so I'm just picking a little bit of the colour up, blending it out so it's getting added across the whole section, just that hint of the colour. But I'm not creating an even colouring here. I want to keep the darker bits in the corner. And I may just need to add just a little bit of colour further out just to keep me and my colours happy. But that works and I've got a nice highlight there. And I'm going to do the same this side, where I'm just going to do this. Again, just blend it out over the middle, just so that the colour is, is mixed with the background colour, I suppose, all across, but less so in the middle. And that will give me that highlight. I would... I am tempted so tempted, really I'm tempted to use other colours, but I think I'm going to try sticking to green here. This is the pear. Now this is going to be interesting because it's quite a light colour, but I do think it's going to show up. Let's pick up some more of the Gamsol. And yeah, there's some basil left on this paper stump and it blends with the pear but I quite I'm fine with that again it's using all the same colors but in slightly different ways blending them together and they always become harmonious now I can't remember the name of the person um, but she will for her junk journals 
pick a couple of colours, watercolours, ones that maybe not go together, or three of them, and she'll just mix them and, and paint squares or shapes on paper card to create tags and, and um, labels and goodness knows what to go in her junk journal. And it works because when you mix those colours together um, in pairs, you know, all three of them might make mud or baby poop, um, you get a harmonious blend of colours mix of colours and it's a good way to learn about colour mixing. So I get that and I think this is why I'm going to use these colours. So I have used the pair there, I may use the pair on the stems actually now. I've got foliage here, oh I want this to go underneath here and come up here so I'm going to add that one there. So where I've got all of these colours the same, I am going to Add the same pattern to them as well. So that's created a slightly different colour and again the background pattern shows through. That little bit there is definitely going to be gold and I'm just to make sure I remember I'm just going to add a bit of gold there and just blend it out or yellow and just blend it out. And I think I might just add this lovely sunflower yellow here perhaps here and maybe this section here as well because I think that might work and again I just need to try and get the lid off this try with both hands Angela and we'll be good to go then Instead of Gamsol, you can get something called Zestit, and there, there are other brands as well. But Zestit smells incredibly orangey, citrusy, and it gets right on my chest. It sets my asthma off. It's the smell it is. But it is made from oranges, whereas this, this isn't. It's, you know, it's um, mineral spirits, which means it's made from oil, which most probably isn't the best thing for me to use, me being an environmental, environmentally aware person, but at least I can make use of it and I get better effects with this than I do with the blending pencils. Actually that green has worked out really really nicely there. I do want to go back to, I haven't used the foliage, so I'm going to put some of the foliage colour in here and I'm just going to blend that down and I'm going to try and use some of it in these sections just to add a bit more green there and this one. Now I was going to add colour in these sections and I'll see how I feel in a moment once I've done these. So I might do just some of them and the rest of them I might put, this might be where I start to put gold hints and so on in. That actually looks, that actually looks quite nice, sorry. I just realised I was probably off the camera because I was zoomed in. Okay. So I like that foliage colour, it looks really nice on here. So I'm going to add it to some of these sections. Perhaps some, some next to each other, some not. There we go, where's my, where's the green one? And just blend it out. So I've got some of the green in those, but the other ones I'm likely to use gold ink in, just for some variation. Of course I can use what's on my brush, on my brush, on my paper stump here just to add those. So that is most of my colour done. I know I haven't done the stems. One hour and nine minutes. You're going to get a long video if I carry on. So I didn't want to add patterns. So I'm going to add foliage down this one. Here and here. If it goes outside the lines, I am not going to fret. Trust me. Oops, wrong colour. Let's go to the foliage. It just gives a lovely kind of stem colour, doesn't it? And yet it fits in. Who says the stems have to be the same colour as leaves? Not me. They're often a different colour. Similar colour, but different.
Okay, and then quickly I'm just going to put some basil down these. I said I was going to do alternate ones, but just for speed here. I'm just going to put basil down the outside. It's probably both out, actually both sides, because then that will really help with that highlight in the middle. Where I've got space to put them in on both sides, I don't always. And then I'll just pick this up and we'll just do that. And it'll be, all be fine and well. It'll all work. Actually, that didn't take too long. I don't know why I didn't do them. And I am working really, really quite quickly here. Much quicker than perhaps... Well, no, this is actually the speed I would work at. Sorry, I'm off the, pa off the table again. There we are. So that is all the colour finished. Now, I do want to add some patterns in here. And this is where it's going. the fun is going to come in, I think. Here, yeah, I'm going to fill it with my nib has dried a little bit, the, the ink will flow. So I'm going to add here. I mean, I'm adding the Zentangle pattern perk because this, this kind of shape just lends itself to it so beautifully. This kind of leafy shape, long, thin, pointy leaf. Something about filling these shapes with in this way. I was looking back at my old art on my Pinterest board, Art by Me, Angela Porter, Art by Angela Porter. And um, my art, in essence, has changed. You know, creating colouring books has altered things a bit. But I still get lost in intricate artwork and simple colours. And it was just a really interesting journey to look back on these things. You know, there's artwork from 14, 15, even longer ago there from my Deviant Art page. And, um, and I spotted some and I went, oh, that's a bit like the neurographic art I did yesterday. So I said I thought I'd done some, something similar before and I have. But that was long before neurographic art was even thought of or done. You know? Must be must have been in the zeitgeist somewhere. So that those look nice. And again, I can go back now afterwards with some colours and add shading. But not quite now because it's wet. The ink's wet. And it might need a little bit longer to dry on top of the gamsol, I'm not entirely sure. So this is the same colour as this one, the pear, and I'm just going to put in straight lines that have the little flared ends on them, just to break this up. They're going in all random directions, no rhyme or reason. They're going however I can because they, they're able to. So I'm not overthinking it, I'm not thinking about balance or anything else, it's just a background texture or textural pattern. And again. I can go back afterwards and add shading to this. I'm not going to on camera. So it's this section as well is pretty much the same as that. So I'll do that quickly. I'm off the page again. I have to remember to push this further away from me because when I pull them in close to me, that is what causes problems or aches in my shoulder still, or again. So I need to look up, look after that because uh, the book needs to be done, the Daydreams book. That's the title of my next colouring book. It's available for pre-order. And um, if you've got any ideas of subjects for things that you think of when you're daydreaming, um, Polite, please. But things that would be suitable for a grown-up colouring book that's for general sale. You know, sort of like adult and um, young teen or young adult. Um, cute and whimsical is my, my kind of theme, more entangled like this. Then drop me a comment. Leave me some suggestions. Just bear in mind, I do not do people. I don't, I don't draw people. 
and there is a story to that. Um, I've tried drawing faces, I've tried drawing my own face. It was an exercise for me to do while I was studying A-level art. And every time I tried, I just burst into floods of tears and get so upset and distressed. I just couldn't do it. So I was, I was allowed not to do it. But I did go and do life drawing. Ah, oh, the yellow carries on here, doesn't it? Right. And again, I still couldn't draw faces. I wasn't interested in faces. Hands and feet are beyond me. Well, they're not beyond me. It's just they have, I have no interest in them. But bodies were interesting because they're very architectural in shape. The shadows and highlights that formed on them, I absolutely got fascinated by. Um, but so I only ever drew a model from the neck down to the wrists and then down to the ankles, really. <laughs> else, or just sections that were fascinating to me, abstracting certain parts. And um, that was so interesting. I mean, it was so in I felt so embarrassed the first time I went and didn't know where to look or what to do. But once you start drawing, you forget about that and then it becomes a whole new kind of experience in its way. So that's all. I've left this part uncoloured. This one needs to be done the same as this. It's the same colour. It is kind of similar to the, the pale green area, but there's more ink around these sections. It's more, um, they're, they're darker, it's more well-defined, I suppose. So it's the thickness of line and the more rounded shape of these little, almost like pebbles or little rounded building blocks, you know, little stones that, like stones that there are that build my house. I mentioned my house earlier. I've still got these two to do and I'm not entirely sure what I'd like to do there. And I know I do need to finish this because I've been almost there, aren't I? Let me just go and do some things here. I'm just going to add a couple of lines at the base of each of these petals just to add a bit more darkness there. bit more texture. I'm going to do the same here. So I'm flicking my pen so that the, the line gets thinner where the pressure eases off as I flick the pen towards me. I prefer to flick it towards me than away from me. I get better results. And I'm going to do the same at the base of the bird. Trying to follow the shape of the space there. So I've got some patterns there and I could do the same with leaves but I'm not going to. Still don't know what to do with these. I think what I'll do is I'm just going to draw rounded blocks in them, completely black knowing that I can always put a dot of gold or white highlight on them, trying to keep them about the same distance from the edge of the space, but that's not critical. So. You can see there how I followed that little shape there. This pen is not the best for colouring in with because its nib is so fine. I have got broader nibs but the same ink in the pens. Same, same make a pen, just different colours slightly. Well, the other two are both purple but one glows in the dark, as I've said. It's just a different way of adding texture. Maybe not Zentangle patterns per se, but they are texture patterns. And there are many others, but my brain just won't bring them to mind today.
The last thing I want to do now, so I may as well finish this now because I'm nearly at the point of it being finished. So another very long video for you <laughs> to watch. You get to see my process in entirety, which is a good thing. So I've got all of that done. And that is actually quite dramatic. What do you think? That is rather cool. So this goes to one side. Hopefully it's not in there. Okay. All my pencils. I'm going to pop the pencils back in my pot of pencils along with those paper stumps and put the gamsol out of the way. I may want to come back and add some of these colours later on. But what I'm really doing is I'm going for my white gel pen. Got that there. And my gold ink, which I've got here. Okay, so I want to add some white dots for highlights here. And the lovely thing about this Uniball um, Hybrid Gel DX pen is that this ink dries very opaque. And I know that if I want to, when I look back on this, I can always go back and add um, more shadows to it. I've got that colour up here, which was is this colour down here. So I am going to <coughs> excuse me. Um, there was a warning on my computer that the pollen is high today. Hay fever. You know, flower pollen is starting to affect me. I'm not going to have much fun, am I? I'm tempted to put white in these, but perhaps not. Definitely going to use white on these. Just adds that little bit of highlight that just helps to bring these into you know, almost a glowing nature. And along the bottom of these, I'm just going to dot a couple of them just inside the black line. Let me get my fingers on this and hold this flat-ish. It's one of the problems of using a heat tool. Is this, um, it does bend the paper, but to flatten it, you just put it underneath something heavy and it flattens. So that's great. All right, so along the bottom here. If I can't get the white dots into a section, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Okay, down the stems is going to be in the centres, especially of those little things. The little sections there. That's too small for me to get dots in without going over the pay the um the lines. So I'm just using that and putting them in where I can. Your brain will read it as if they're everywhere mostly or that they're implied, which is fine by me. Implied dots are good. Up here. I'm going to put dots on the tops of these. Like so, like so. There we go. And some just along the area of highlight on the leaves. So again, just adding a hint of light and reflection tried using lines for this and it just doesn't feel right whereas the the dots always do I think it's because I can spread them out and 
feels more organic, I think, than lines, perhaps. It gives, it gives a texture as well, which is always good. Okay, so those are all done, perhaps a couple there. Perhaps a couple more here. So that's, oh, need one on the end there, little light bulb. These definitely need some more shading up here, I think. Okay, all right, now then. I said in these I'm going to put some gold in some of them, but I also think I'm going to put some white blocks inside some of them too. So that just adds that little bit of a, a difference here. Like so. Come back to the others in a moment, because what I want now, before I do anything else, is I'm going to use my black pen just to add some very, very fine lines to some others, just to add some variation, but using ink instead of colour to add that shadow or to intensify things, make it darker, like so. And I just realised I haven't done any of the dots in this set of perks up here. Yeah, I'd get to it, I know that. Like so. And then I need a I need a brush. I would like quite a fine brush. That's a 3 O, that's tiny. But I think that'll work. Um 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 where's my water bottle? Where have I put that? Put it somewhere, but I don't know where. Where is it? Oh, the smirking. What the smirky? Ah, oh, there it is. Smirking dirking, have I done with that? I'm going to put some water on my table. It's fine. It won't damage it. Just so I can get this right. Shake the gold ink up. I'm using um, the Winsor & Newton calligraphy ink. Okay. And it's gold. Because... It's luxurious. So I'm just going to pick a little bit of this up and then in some of these sections I'm just going to add some gold here. Not to all of them because some of them I'm going to leave with just the colour in as well. And, uh, I'm going to do the same with some of the others. I'll add that one there and I'll add some just there, like that. You can see just along the edge, hopefully, the little hints of gold that are there. Yeah. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to add gold in the middle of these. I'm using my brush. I was going to add white, but I thought, no, I think I want gold here. Because that will tie gold in elsewhere. Am I going to put gold, gold on my flowers? No. So I'm going to use gold in the background behind them. Now, because the ink I use in my fountain pen is waterproof, it works on top of the ink, it doesn't bleed the ink, but you have to be careful if this is something you're going to do that the ink you're using is... Um... So in this one, picking this up, putting little dots here. I like this brush. thought it was tiny, but it's perfect for me. It's a De La Rowney Aquafine round three zeros three slash zero it's got on it which means it's an OOO so it's a very fine brush which are the ones I prefer because I'm not I tend to do very tiny delicate intricate work 
Ah, now that one there was going to be entirely gold, wasn't it? So I'm going to make it so. Now if my gold goes over the black lines and the black lines become out of shape or thickness, I'll just go back and use my ink pen over them. Nearly done. That works. I'm happier now. And then I'm going to use gold in some of these spots of water. I'm going to use these to guide where I put my spots of gold rather than me overthink things. So I'm looking for the ones that are rounded to add the gold to, right up to the edge as well. Because I think that is a better way of me doing this than getting quite formulaic. So we're going to have them in lots of places. I haven't got any down here. There's one there, it's very subtle. There's one here that's partial, there's one there. This area hasn't got much, it's very light, but I'm just going to put some in there. But one there, one there too. There's a little bit of one there. Here, there's one there, one there. I'm going to take that as one, just on the edge there. This one up here, I'm going to do. And I've just got a couple down the side now. There's some there, there's a couple there. I'm just going to check. The others aren't really round, but perhaps I'll just put a couple there and leave the rest as they are. Put the lid on my ink, I'm just going to put my water there. Now this ink is water soluble, so it means that I'm going to be able to clean it off my table, so don't panic, okay? Um, that's my first job once I finish the video now in a moment. All right, but it's important I get the, the brush wet and keep the brush wet so I can clean, make sure it's cleaned properly. Now, this ink will take a little while to dry in those spots, but you can see, hopefully, the piles of gold and so on on here. Kept it away from the leaves and the plants, though I could look and see if I can see any dots through the leaves and the, the petals and add some there. But I think I'm going to leave those as they are. Last thing I need to do, last thing, I need to put my initials on here somewhere. And I'm going to choose right in the bottom edge here, like so. And on the back I will write the date and everything else. So I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this particular tutorial in its entirety. Yes, I know it's an hour and a half long, but you know, needs must. Every now and again, it's nice to do something like this. And yeah, it's another botanical one. And I said, I really enjoy these edges on my work. I know it's a bit different, but it's a bit me. I'll keep the other tag for another video and perhaps do something a bit quicker, maybe bit more geometrical, pattern-like. We'll see. So until then, please look after yourselves, take care, and find time to be creative, and I'll see you again soon. Until then, ta-ra, bye, hoyle.